first um, speaker is Professor Han Chi. He is a professor of Insti Institute for the History of Natural Sciences, and he's also a member of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Today, he will be giving a talk on knowledge and power, a social history of the transmission of mathematics between China and Europe during Council reign. Please welcome him. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. So it's my pleasure and honor to be here. Please speak into the microphone. Okay, sorry. So the three keywords uh, in my talk, it, one is the emperor, and then the Jesuit, and then the European mathematics. So after the Italian Jesuit Madrich arrived in China in 1582, Chinese science entered a new era. So the aim of Jesuits in China were of course primarily missionary, and from the beginning they used science merely as uh, a means of arousing Chinese scholars interested in Christianity. However, their influence in China was to prove effective mostly in the field of science itself. So in the late 17th and early 18th centuries, they played a leading role in the transmission of mathematical knowledge between China and Europe. So the Kangxi Emperor, the second ruler of the Qing Dynasty, reigned over this vast empire from 1662 to 1722. So as mentioned monarch, he had from childhood followed the Manchu traditions of archery and horse riding. So at the same time, he received a good education in the traditional Confucian classics from his high officials. And he played an essential role in the transmission of Western mathematics to China. So in the 1660s, great impressed by controversy between Jesuit missionaries and Chinese scholars on, on scientific and religious matters, he began to study European mathematics seriously. So in the long history of China, such an interest was unusual for an emperor. So in this talk, I would like to, to begin by considering why the Kangxi Emperor studied to study European mathematics and how he used it as a means to show off in front of uh, Chinese officials, particularly in an episode, uh, in a celebrated episode that happened in the Forbidden City in 1692. So uh, in addition, by examining the, uh, by examining the emperor's attitude toward Western science, I, I will analyze why in 1713 he launched a new academy of mathematics. Then I will talk about the circulation and translation of European mathematical books in China and explore why the emperor became interested in traditional Chinese mathematics. So finally, I will talk about the leading role the French Jesuit Xiaoxin Wei played in bridging the shared interest of the German philosopher Leibniz and the Kangxi Emperor in their study of the Book of Changes and the binary system of numbers. So shortly after the establishment of the Qing Empire in 1644, its first Manchu Emperor Sun Tzu invited the German Jesuit Adam von Bell to be director of the Imperial Board of Astronomy. So at the Xiao's suggestion, Sun Tzu had the Qing adopt the European astronomical system. However, after the Kangxi Emperor came to power in 1662, this consensus came under attack. Two years later, a conser conservative Chinese scholar Yang Guangxian launched a Kellen case that harshly criti criticized U European astronomy. So Xiao and his colleagues were arrested, and several Chinese Christian astronomer put to the death. So this event deeply impressed the young Kangxi emperor, as he later recounted to his sons, I quote, so you only know that I'm worse in mathematics, 
But you don't know why I studied mathematics. When I was young, the Chinese officials and the Westerners at the Imperial Board of Astronomy were on unfriendly terms with each other. So they made accusations against one another. It almost came to capital punishment. So Yang Guangxian and Adam Chef von Bell competed in measuring the length of the sun's shadow in front of the nine chief ministers at the Wuhan Gate. So unfortunately, among those main ministers, there was no one who knew about this method. I realized that, I realized that if I didn't know it myself, how could I judge true from false? So I very eagerly determined to study mathematics. So thus, it was this calendar dispute that prompted Council Emperor to study European mathematics. From his youth, he became very interested in Western science and invites, invited the Belgian Jesuit Ferdinand Fabius to be his earliest scientific tutor. So this is a portrait of uh, uh, Fabius. He, he, he not only uh, taught the council emperors uh, the, the mathematical philosophy, he also he was an advisor uh, for, for ca uh, canon making. So this is a canon he, uh, uh, he made uh, with his name on it, I, which I took uh, 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 the photo from the Ingolstadt, uh, the museum of the military museum. So at that time, Fabist was worried about the severe shortage of Jesuit mathematicians in China. And in 1678, he wrote a letter urgently appealing to Jesuits all over Europe to join the China mission. So in response to Fabist's urgent appeal of 1678, Jean de Fontenay, Jacin Bouet, Jean-Francois Gervillon, and other two Jesuits came to Beijing. So sent by Louis XIV and <coughs> as the king's mathematician, they were expected to glorify the French king, propagate Christian doctrines, benefit science and arts, and, they bear, and thereby reduce Portuguese sea power in East Asia. So the, so the Jesuits were sent from uh, the, the, port, the, the port city, West and, and through and because at that time the the France had contact with uh, Siam, so they they, they uh, stopped at the Ayutthaya, the, the capital of Siam, and from that city they went to China, China <coughs> not via uh, Macau. So because at that time the the uh, 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 the Portuguese was, uh, uh, you know, they controlled the, uh, the Christ, uh, uh, spread of the uh, Christian uh, mission in China. So, so many uh, Jesuits were sent uh, by, by the Portuguese king uh, via Goa, and from Goa to Macau, and from Macau to, to Beijing. So, so the French Jesuit took, took the different routes. And uh, uh, before they arrived in China, they spent some time in, in Ayutthaya and uh, made the uh, astronomical observation in, 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 in Siam and, uh, for determining the, the latitude, uh, longitude of uh, uh, you know, the difference between Paris and uh, uh, Ayutthaya. So they made uh, a lot of observation, and this is a uh, 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 Observation that manuscript I found in, in Paris. Uh, uh, this observation was were made uh, from 1685 to 1698. So, so many kind of observation are still extant. And in addition to the uh, the king's mathematicians, uh, another group was sent uh, uh, via Moscow to to Beijing, uh, but uh, they were stopped by the Russian, Russian people. And uh, the Louis XIV wrote a letter to the Kangxi Emperor in 1682. So, uh, so in, in, 
uh, in February, on February the 7th, uh, the, in 1688, the King's mathematician evaluated Beijing. And a few days later, they, they were received by the Kangxi Emperor. And they, they uh, presented the Emperor many uh, scientific instruments, like armor sphere, microscope, telescope, and astrolab, pendulum, and uh, uh, many uh, astronomical books, and uh, the European uh, maps and a box of uh, magnets. So, and an, uh, an instrument of Roman's uh, instrument was also presented to the Kangxi Emperor. So, um, the transmission of uh, Western mathematics in, 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 during the Kangxi reign could be divided roughly uh, 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 two periods. And, and the, the, the arrival of Francis in Beijing uh, is another very in, important period. So after the, uh, their arrival in Beijing, the Kangxi Emperor consulted, consulted this French mathematician on European art and science, and systematically set about studying these aspects of Western learning. So from 1689 to 1691, Bouet, Gerbillon, Antoine Thomas, and Thomas Pereira frequently taught mathematics to the emperor. They translated mathematical books into Chinese and Manchu, so including the, uh, the text of book of uh, 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 the College Louis de Coron uh, by Baptiste uh, was translated into Manchu and, uh, and Chinese. And another textbook written by the Belgian Jesuit Antoine Thomas, uh, entitled Synopsis Mathematica, was also introduced in, in, into uh, was also translated into into Chinese, and many uh, scientific instruments uh, were introduced uh, in, uh, w w were brought to China, like the calculating machines uh, and uh, Napier's rods and proportional compasses and, and survey, uh, survey instruments. So many, many, of, many of which are preserved today in the Paris Museum in Beijing. So to help the emperor in, in his study of European mathematics, this Jesus designed a special mathematical table uh, and, uh, and models for teaching solid geometry. So this, uh, uh, this uh, table and uh, models are still pre preserved in Beijing. So if you go to uh, the Paris Museum, you can see it. So during the early Qing dynasty, scholars of Han Chinese origin perceived the Manchu rulers as a comparatively uncivilized ethnic minority. That is, they were both, both alien and barbarian. So even after the full reunification of the of, of the empire under Manchu rule in 1683, there were numerous political and cultural conflicts between Manchus and Han Chinese. So in order to promote Manchu prestige, the Kangxi Emperor studied not only the traditional Chinese classics, but also Western learning, even attempting to show his Chinese subjects that his command of Western learning was superior to theirs. <coughs> So the ongoing tension between the Manchus and Chinese, Han Chinese was a great concern to the emperor, leading to his own recurrent distrust of Chinese officials. So to test their honesty and loyalty, examine their knowledge, and reduce their circumferency, he commonly used the newly acquired Western learning. So in addition, the Kangxi Emperor seized the opportunity to show off his mathematics ability at the court. On February 20, 1692, Kangxi summoned his high ministers and even Chinese scholars versed in mathematics to the Hall of Heavenly Purity for a lecture on the relationship between music and mathematics, as well as on the ratio of the circumf circumference of the circle to its di diameter. He also ordered the installation of a Norman and personally drew a line to demonstrate his understanding of whole Norman functions. 
He predicted the location where the shadow would reach at high noon and ordered his ministers to observe, observe the shadow. So at exact, exact, exactly high noon, the length of the shadow just touched the line drawn, drawn by the emperor, missing, missing it by not so much as a hair. So this event is recounted in not just the court records, but also in the private records of ministers as assembled to view this spectacle of imperial sagacity. So Kangxi's ability left a lasting impression on the assembled officials. So they, the ministers, I quote, received humbly the emperor's lessons, heard what had never before been heard, saw what was, was never before seen, and the joy knew no limits. So in, the, in addition, they felt an uh, In addition, they also felt an undefined sense of inadequacy. So I quote, after the meeting, we were joyful, yet deeply ashamed of the shallowness of, of, of our knowledge. We had, we had stubbornly held onto their knowledge and were no, unknowingly seduced by it. So conscious action also had a political motive as the lecture and the demonstration provided him an opportunity to show his genius in front of his ministers and challenge Chinese officials' presumptions about the superiority of their cultural and mathematical learning. So his success in this court session of 1692 had resulted from more than two years of systematic study. So the Jesuits had given Kangxi access to new knowledge from Europe and thereby provided him with the basis for his memorable performance. So on several other occasions, Kangxi also used his newly acquired skills to put the Confucian elite in their place, even in 1702, publicly criticizing Chinese scholars as completely ignorant of mathematics. So during the course of his education, the emperor learned many things from the Jesuits and became quite knowledgeable in scientific methods. As soon as he received many, any new information from his, his Jesuit tutors, he tried to teach what he understood and manifest his scientific ability in front of his ministers. He frequently asked his, his subjects mathematical questions that he had just learned from the Jesuits. Sometimes he even personally instructed young scholars in mathematics and displayed his wide knowledge in front of his ministers during, the, during field trips that involved map surveying or visiting river dam construction projects. So through many such demonstrations, the emperor won their admiration for his talent in mathematics. So indeed, he seemed very pleased by the ministerial applause that greeted his demonstrations of scientific ability and erudite knowledge. So as a Manchu ruler, he wanted to exhibit to Chinese the cultural and intellectual accomplishments that he had and they didn't, to confirm why he and his Manchu family were the sons of heaven ruling China and its people. So sent to China as a paper legate to solve the problems of the rice controversy, the Tunong arrived in Beijing in 1705, at a time when disagreement between the Qing court and the Catholic Church had become serious. So the legate wanted to prohibit Chinese Christians of ancestral worship and other traditional Chinese practices, and in February 1707, issued a decree which condemned the practices in question as superstitious. So this decree offended the Kangxi Emperor greatly and fed his distrust of the Europeans. In late 1706, after, after listening to a lecture 
on Zhu Xi's learning, the Kangxi Emperor summoned two of his ministers and said to them, I quote, Do you know that the Westerner, Westerners are increasingly mischievous? They are even, even attacking Kung Fu. The reason why I treat them, them well is merely to make use of their skills and arts. So the Tonon's legation, in fact, is a turning point in the imperial court's relationship to the Catholic Church. Kangxi, so, once so friendly with the missionaries, became suspicious of and even hostile to them, a change of mind that is evident in many official documents and in memorials, and that quickly became known throughout the empire. So his stance was not purely emotional or political. In 1706, the emperor had believed that European methods of predicting astronomical phenomena were much more precise. So yet, in 1711, in observing the shadows of sun at the summer solstice, he found that the calculation of the imperial board of astronomy based on European methods were not accurate, and so he changed, changed his conviction. He realized, realized that the European astronomical system was out of date, and a new compendium of astronomy and mathematics must be compiled. So for this purpose, the Academy of the, the Emperor issued an edict in 1713 to establish an Academy of Mathematics in, in, in an imperial villa in the northwest suburbs of Beijing. So also several Jesuits were asked to teach there. It operated largely independent of the Westerners at, at its court. So after interviewing more than 300 candidates, he personally recruited 72 young Chinese, Manchu and Mongolia scholars, well versed in mathematics, to serve in this academy. And many Jesuits, uh, including French Jesuits and German Jesuits, worked there, and several uh, missionaries from other uh, orders, they also worked there. So the completion of a compendium of astronomical, mathematical, and musical text entitled The Region of Pitch Pipes and Calendar was, a, was one of the main goals. So it, in, uh, it, includes, uh, it includes three, three books, uh, one about uh, uh, mathematics basic, entitled Basic Principles of Mathematics, and another is about the calendar, and the, sec the third is about the music. So in order to understand better the circulation and uh, through the Chinese empire of the, of the learning and the knowledge brought from Europe, it is essential to observe the different ways European mathematical books arrived in China and were kept in three Catholic churches in Beijing. So at the same time, there, there were three Catholic churches in, in Beijing, and two uh, belonged to the Portuguese Jesuits, and another one uh, uh, belonged to uh, the, the French Jesuits. So in the 17th and early 18th century, centuries, once the Jesuits and Chinese were translating books of European mathematics, they sometimes mentioned the original source texts. However, in most cases, European sources were not mentioned. Since most of the books compiled at the Kangxi court were imperially commissioned, the name of European authors and the titles of their source texts were seldom cited. So this practice has led to great difficulty in identifying the origins of mathematics in these Chinese language books. So this practice of not citing Western sources has also downplayed the amount of European mathematical learning that was translated, transmitted to China at this time. Since the French Jesuits like Bouet, Chardou, and Fouquet served as court mathematicians, 
So they played a leading role in, 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 in introducing a number of European mathematical books into, into Chinese. Their mathematical collection should be seriously considered. So recently, scholars have begun to do excellent research on the circulation of European books and suggested libraries in different places in China, helping us understand how and why mathematical books were introduced <coughs> and translated. So according to Dr. Noel Hover's research, many European mathematical books were brought to China and preserved in Jesuit libraries there. So such as uh, some elementary mathematics, um, it's, it's the title is the, here, and some advanced mathematics written by uh, Don L'Hôpital uh, and uh, Warris and uh, Carré. Um, so and uh, addition to these mathematical books, some journals of uh, European is, uh, institutions like Histoire de l'Académie Royale de Sciences and the Journal de Savant, published in Paris, and the Philosophical Transactions, published by the Royal Society of London, and the Acta Electorum, published in, in, in Germany, were also brought to China. So furthermore, uh, Many handwritten or printed mathematical tables are still preserved today in the Palace Museum in Beijing. So some of, of them were used by the Kangxi Emperor on his field trips outside of Beijing. So in other words, recent research has demonstrated that during the Kangxi era, much more European mathematical knowledge circulated in imperial commissioned works than previous thought. So this is uh, uh, European mathematics which, which were uh, introduced to China, like uh, the arithmetic logarithmic uh, written by Henry Briggs, the British mathematician, and the Dutch mathematician Flux uh, uh, mathematical table, and, uh, and the Batis and Antoine's uh, uh, Thomas uh, textbook and uh, algebra was first for the first time in, introduced into China and several uh, uh, for, uh, formulae of infinite series of in expansion were also uh, introduced into China so the Pen Henry Briggs uh, this, this is the title page of Henry Briggs and Frax uh, book and the, this is uh, one page from uh, Briggs' uh, uh, book and the Chinese translation with uh, 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 numbers in Chinese and the method for computing logarithms. This is a, a Chinese version. It's a rough, right. And the Frax table was also introduced at that time. So after 1669, the Kangxi Emperor believed that Western science was a far superior to Chinese science, and often expressed his, this opinion in conversations with his high officials. However, shortly after beginning his ardent study of mathematics, he proposed a theory of the Chinese origin of Western learning in 1703, an idea that the Western mathematics sci sciences had originated in China. So in his short essay on the triangles, the Kangxi Emperor first, first explained why he had studied Western science and then talked about the relationship between the European and the Chinese traditional calendars, I quote. So some believe that the ancient and the modern methods are different. Actually, they don't know the calendar deeply the calendar which originated in China was transmitted to the far west. The westerners kept it, made the observation endlessly, and revised it every year. Therefore, the calendar is quite precise. 
So the reason why he proposed this theory of the Chinese origin of Western learning is quite interesting. So as a Manchu ruler who governs the Han Chinese, he intended to embrace Confucianism. So if he learned Western mathematics, he therefore might be, might be regarded as alien by Chinese officials. So to some extent, his aim in advocating this theory was to mitigate such criticism, to play down any dispute between Western and Chinese learning, and to dial the anti-foreign antagonism in the anti christianity movement. So at the same time, it also provided Han Chinese with an excellent justification to learn European mathematics and astronomy. So having developed from ancient Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, uh, having de developed from ancient Chinese sciences, this learning could be judged as fundamental Chinese. So thanks to the emperor's advocacy and the subsequent propagation by Chinese scholars, this theory became widely known and influenced the study of mathematical sciences in China during the 18th and 19th centuries. So in order to strengthen the impression that he also was a master of a traditional Confucian learning, the Kangxi Emperor paid attention to traditional Chinese mathematical book works, such as those written by Zhu Zaiyu and Chen Da Wei. So in addition, the Norman of the Zhou Dynasty, the oldest, oldest classic of ancient Chinese astronomy, aroused the emperor's interest. The emperor's interest also influenced the imperial compilers of the basic mathematical principles. So at the front of the opening chapter, the compiler inserted the annotation of the Norman of the Zhou Dynasty, thereby underlining their message that China had the most ancient tradition in mathematics and thus was font of mathematical knowledge. So in addition to the Norman of the Zhou Dynasty, the Kangxi Emperor was interested in the Confucian classic, The Book of Changes. His ardent interest in this book derived in large part from, from his relationship with Bu Wei, who, whose own interest in the Book of Changes had been inspired by the German philosopher Leibniz. So Leibniz had been interested in China from no later than 1666. In 1689, he began to correspond with the Italian Jesuit, Jesuit Grimaldi after they had met in Rome. On the 19th, July 1689, Leibniz asked, asked Grimaldi a couple of questions in which he wondered if there had been ge geometrical demonstrations in ancient China. Professor Kahin Shemra mentioned that before. So he also asked for way similar questions and in 1697 published the latest news from China, Nova Sinica. So on October the 18th, having read this book after, after his return to France, Wei wrote to Leibniz. So from then on, they kept kept in close contact. So the uh, several letters are still extant, and, and six letters from Wei to Leibniz, and uh, nine letters from Leibniz to Wei. So in his letter dated the 15th February 1701, Leibniz first introduced the idea of the binary system to Wei. So from a theological point of view, he believes that all numbers can be derived from one and zero. He thought that his study of the binary system would have a great impact on Chinese philosophers and even interest the Kangxi Emperor. Hence, he strongly in encouraged Bu Wei to present it to the Emperor. Also, Leibniz had been working on a binary system for a long time. He had not planned to publish it, publish it. So the year 1700 was important because Leibniz became a correspond, corresponding member of the Royal Academy of Sciences in Paris. So on the 1st April 1703, Bouet's letter 
of the 4th November 1701 reached the Leibniz in Berlin. So within a, a week of receiving it, Leibniz communicated the discovery to his friend Woda, the confessor of the King of Poland, and sent it on to the Abbe Bignon for publication in the Journal of the Paris Academy. So this paper entitled Ex Explication of the Binary Arithmetic was published in the Histoire de l'Académie Royale de Sciences in 1705. So, and so we can conclude that, thanks to Bouvet's letter, Leibniz was, was stimulated to publish, his, to publish his paper on the binary system. So as mentioned above, Leibniz had suggested to Bouvet that he submit Leibniz's idea of the binary system to the Council Emperor. So interestingly enough, the 1705 edition of the Histoire de l'Académie by the Chance with this article was presented to the emperor in 1714, when Bouvet, Kiliam Stumpf, and other Jesuits were summoned to the imperial court. <coughs> so the council emperor thereby got to know of Leibniz's name and became curious about his mathematics, asking the Jesuits to tell him as soon as possible what was worth, worth knowing of it. The archival documents vividly record the, the ensuing dialogue among the Jesuits and the Emperor. But as Stumpf did not recognize the importance of Leibniz's paper, he did not have it translated for the Emperor. So hence, Leibniz's paper, uh, like the binary system, would have to wait until the 20th century to be introduced to China. So perhaps after the, his correspondence with Leibniz, Bouvet was stimulated to study the Book of Changes seriously for his, for his mathematics. So his research even aroused the Kangxi Emperor's interest. So in 1711, the Emperor put forward the new idea that the mathematical principles are all de derived from the Book of Changes, and in the following year claimed that Western methods were identical with the numerical principles in this book. So it is interesting that Kangxi's view was influenced by Bu Wei, who served as a court scholar in the compilation of the Book of Changes. Why it was not Bu Wei's purpose to prove this theory, he didn't diligently investigate his Chinese cl classics from a figurative point of view. However, his results unintentionally provided support for the emperor's theory of the Chinese region of Western learning. So I'll just show you some manuscripts of Jashin uh, Wei. Uh, some of were, uh, are preserved in, in, in Rome, and uh, some uh, were uh, preserved in Paris. So I, this is from Paris, uh, the archives. And we can know that he used the uh, explain the mathematical knowledge in, uh, included in the in the I Ching, and uh, and because he served as a court uh, scholar, uh, so he his manuscript manuscript was used by the the Chinese scholars for the first time in the in the books of uh, the book of changes because before that uh, no scholar in China mentioned the. Uh, kind of mathematical principles in, in the Book of Changes. So the Shashin uh, Bui played a very important role in, 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 in explaining the Book of Changes in mathematical ways. Now I come to the concluding remarks. So the Council M period was very crucial in the transmission of European mathematical, mathematical science to China. Kangxi's interest in mathematics was widely known in the empire, and in order to win the emperor's favor, some scholars began to study mathematics and train young mathematicians. So the importance of mathematics was recognized by Chinese literati. This recognition in turn stimulated the development of mathematics in China. However, in the end, the spread of Western science during Kangxi reign 
did not succeed. Kanti tried to associate his scientific studies with, with his political interests by using his knowledge of science as an aid in statecraft to control Chinese officials and even the missionaries. So early on in his reign, relations between the Chinese and the Manchu were still tense. So in many cases, he expressed his distrust of Chinese officials. He also, he found that Chinese scholars were, in, were incompetent in scientific matters. This is one of the key reasons why he studied European mathematics himself, in order to win the admiration of Chinese officials. So since his youth, mathematics became an important part of his political life. So as a ruler, Kang Xi successfully enhanced Manchu prestige through science. In fact, mathematics was a very useful tool for the emperor to show off his learning in his dialogues with, with his officials. Hence, out of fear that his newly acquired mathematical knowledge would spread beyond his control, he sometimes strove to keep it for a while as his private property, as he did with the knowledge of algebra acquired from Antoine Thomas. So this may very, very well explain why some mathematic books translated into Chinese were not published during his time. Their knowledge, therefore, not spreading beyond the imperial court. Theoretically, the country court should have provided Chinese with a good opportunity to learn more extensively, extensively from European scientists. Since it had so many Jesuits, who had close contact with the European scientists. However, owing to the limits in his own understanding, his somewhat narrow perspective, and his desire to multiply European knowledge, the Council Emperor impeded the transmission of European mathematics and restricted it mainly to those within his imperial court. However, the publication on the basic mathematical principles did benefit mathematicians generally in the 18th and 19th centuries and led to the discovery and study of Sonian mathematics. So in this way, the introduction of European mathematics during Kangxi reign nonetheless played an important role in the history of Chinese mathematics outside court as well. So finally, i just to show you the engraving uh, uh, which this one was uh, presented to Europe by the, the tutor of the uh, the Kangxi Emperor, Xia Xin Bu Wei. So the Kangxi holding the scepter. So that's uh, that's the uh, end of my my talks. Thank you for your. <laughs> Are there any questions? Kangxi's reign or his life uh, is all black with uh, that of uh, Isaac Newton. And somehow I noticed that there's no mention about the Pisky uh, mathematics or calculus uh, in uh, the emperor's uh, uh, records. And I wonder why it was ignored. Is it because the, uh, he was not interested in the heavenly notions or it, or it was because of the, uh, his conviction about the uh, Chinese cultural uh, you know, the, uh, superiority against the, uh, the uh, Western. And the second question is, in, and the second question is, in the book of changes, you know, the uh, uh, the book you show me uh, about the uh, Leibniz's letter and. The, the, the symbols of the uh, book of change, the A symbols were uh, numbered of uh, uh, 1 to uh, 8. And I wonder how uh, the sequence was determined. How, uh, I wonder if the, uh, that was the original sequence in the book of uh, uh, changes. The third, uh, third question is, you said that the, some of the negative impact was that the, uh, the emperor did not want to spread the uh, mathematical knowledge to the uh, uh, populace so that 
uh, he can maintain a Manchurian uh, superiority against the Han uh, people. And so I wonder if uh, Emperor was only studying uh, himself or he and his children were studying mathematics. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, for the first question, actually uh, Principia was, uh, was brought to China, but uh, but uh, you know the whole system was not uh, in, uh, translated in Chinese. But one uh, of his uh, Newton's uh, formulae was uh, about uh, the, the initial expansion was introduced to China. But uh, Newton's name was not mentioned. But only after uh, in, in the Yongzheng period, after uh, Kangxi passed away, uh, uh, some uh, some uh, Newton's name was mentioned uh, uh, in, in some. Astronomic books, and I'm sorry I could not answer the, the second question. But as for the third question, uh, actually uh, the Kangxi Emperor asked uh, his uh, sons to learn from the Jesuits. So the third son of the Kangxi Emperor, he he was very uh, smart and he learned the mathematics from the, the Jesuits. So the Kangxi Emperor instruct him to supervise the you know, compilation of the mathematical books. So the third prince played a very important role. So he had very close contact with uh, the Jesuits. He, sometimes he sent uh, uh, some Chinese scholar to the, to the church to check the, you know, the European books. So, 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 so all you know, the, uh, the study of mathematics was controlled by the imperial court. Uh, so it's a, it's a uh, very few uh, uh, mathematicians at the court they, 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 they can have access to the mathematical knowledge newly introduced by, by, by the, uh, uh, the Jesuits. Uh, so, so actually, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, after the translation of algebra, for instance, so Kansi did not, did not want to publish it uh, immediately. So he, he wanted to keep uh, keep wanted to keep for a while for, for, for the publication. So, but uh, so he, he didn't he didn't want to you know as a mathematical knowledge you know to spare it uh, immediately. So that's uh, yeah. Was the third Sengoku during the power struggle after uh, Gangsi's demise? Yeah, he was not killed, but he was uh, you know uh, because he the. This, uh, because the fourth emperor, a uh, fourth son uh, became the emperor, so he, he had not uh, good relationship with the third son. So he was kind of uh, 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 very good, uh, very bad relationship. So he was not, he was no longer used, uh, you know, the, the compiler of the mathematical books. So so so, 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 so yeah. So because uh, he, he was supposed the. the a kind of a crown prince, so there's a kind of conflict, conflict between the third and the, the fourth son, the late the young emperor. Thank you very much. <laughs> we are very short of time, so please stop here for the questions. The rest of the questions you can ask uh, outside, and we will continue in five minutes. Thank you.